Hey guys and welcome to today's video where we are going to be going over the AMD's release of the new AM4 chip and I'll be talking primarily about the new Ryzen 7 5700X 3D chip which has been just launched for the AM4 undead platform by now. This is quite an unexpected release from AMD. I mean this AM4 platform is moving on to being 8 years old by now and uh, well the fact that they're still releasing some sort of CPU support for it that means that well they're gonna be still covering the AM4 platform for some years to come which is absolutely nice to see for all of you guys out there running the AM4 platform. I myself am included in this platform because at home I am running an AM4 platform with the Ryzen 9 3900X that definitely shows its age when you're trying to play some AAA games in some specific hardware scenarios like for instance I have a 3090 and I would run into bottlenecks whenever I would try to play Hogwarts Legacy my GPU would not go past 70% and that can be upsetting for all of you guys out there who are having aim for platforms and uh, basically your CPU can be a bottleneck for your new shiny GPU so having this GPU launched by AMD it's a nice surprise overall and is definitely a way to move forward in your gaming uh, you know adventures if you want and uh, basically you are able to increase your performance because you're now having access to that layered uh, 3D cache which is stacked on top of the CPU that you would otherwise have with the AM5 platform. So now you can have access to this uh, with still your AM4 platform so you don't have to change out your motherboard and that's really nice to see because that uh, equals up to extra expenses and definitely you don't want that and maybe you just want a CPU that can handle the new workload that you have with a new GPU. So starting off with the king of the hill here the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X3D it's basically the same as its uh, non-X3D counterpart here uh, the boost and the frequency should be a bit uh, slower here as the base one but you do get a 100 megabytes of total cache that is of course that layered cache that I was talking about and in order for them to give you more uh, megabytes in layered cache and L3 cache levels they would basically have to reduce the overall performance of the chip uh, just to get stability for that extra layered uh, capacity there but uh, that's why they say you know if you want to gain get the x3d that's because it gives you more access to l3 level cache which is really important for gaming and fps and performance while if you are doing mainly productivity tasks then uh, you shouldn't go for that because it's not going to be handling productivity tasks as good running at lower base clocks than uh, would otherwise go with the x3d and moving down here let's just quickly see what you get with each and any one of them so basically you are getting 8 cores and 16 threads on all of them as you can see right here. Uh, the maximum boost clock you would get 4.6, 4.6 and of course you're getting 4.1 on the X3D chip. That's as I've said because they're trying to achieve stability with the added layer 3 cache that would otherwise be impossible by maintaining the same clock speed with the non X3D chips. Uh, the base clock again so you have a higher base clock here which is 3.7. And this is 3.4 on the X uh, version and of course you're getting only 3 GHz on the X3D stuff. You can consider the 5700 as just being a 5700G without the G. So basically, you know, you don't have the eGPU side of it activated. So that's basically why you have a higher boost clock than the X version anyways. Uh, the L1 cache is basically the same. The L2 cache is basically the same running at 4 MB here, 4 MB, 4 MB. But definitely where you do see an increase is basically the L3 cache. You had 16 megabytes on the 57. You had 32 on the 5700X2, uh, 5700X I should say. And then you had 96 megabytes of L3 cache added for the X3D part. Um, the overall TDP of course is going to be different. So you had 65 on both of these variants while you have 105 here. That's because it has to run hotter with that added uh, level 3 cache there. Another thing that I would try to point out here is basically that for the non-X version of this chip. So if you do have this non-X version, you would only have support for PCI 3. Um, while for the rest of them, the X and the X3D chip, you basically have PCI 4 enabled lanes, which is actually really nice if you're running, I don't know, some very fast NVMe SSDs in there, then definitely, you know, PCI Gen 4 is the way to go forward and uh, you would have get access or you should get access with that for the X and X3D chips of the same variant. So just to summarize things here, who is this primarily aimed for? Well, especially for the guys who have early adopted the AM4 platforms with the CPUs that were released uh, initially for it, because if you have updated or upgraded your GPU by now, you can definitely run into scenarios where you are having CPU bottlenecks 
with, especially with some AAA games. I know I'm having CPU bottlenecks with my Ryzen 9 uh, 3900X, especially when playing Hogwarts Legacy on my 3090, because I can't go past the threshold of 70% GPU utilization, so that I know for sure. It's a CPU bottleneck in that title for this specific configuration and this can definitely help uh, sort things out for me and I will be trying out this Ryzen 5, not 9, but Ryzen 5 uh, 5700X3D chip because that should be allowing me um, the access to extra FPS and performance in my GPU with my current configuration without having to swap out the motherboard and basically move on to the new AM5 platform. And I know there are quite a few out there uh, who actually don't want to incur the extra cost that comes with changing out the platform and the extra headache, uh, especially not in this economy. And this basically just comes as a rescue horse for all of you out there who are just trying to get the most out of their existing uh, hardware configuration. As always guys, any feedback is greatly appreciated. So let me know down in the box below what you think of the overall release for this AM4 platform. And uh, is it nice to see that uh, you know AMD is still supporting this platform that we are having and is quite ancient by now? Uh, or otherwise would you just move on to the new AM5 before you're dedicating and committing yourself to buying a new CPU and being stuck in the same platform. Thank you guys a ton for watching, you're so awesome, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't and see you guys in the next one, peace out.